Um, so I want to kind of just start and say that we're trying to emulate the outside environment in here, basically, with a gym. Um, but sometimes, many times actually, in the outside environment, things still aren't really all that sturdy. Things can be flimsy, you don't want to train on them, right? Generally, if something shakes, it's going to break down over time. That's the simplest thing that we've found here. If something wiggles, eventually it will get destroyed through different impacts. Uh, that wiggling motion is acting somewhere on some fastener, uh, is doing a lever, and it's compounding that force over and over and over again, and whatever made it wiggle at the start is just going to get worse and worse and worse, and then it's going to break apart, right? Uh, railings that are embedded entirely in concrete can still have this problem. The concrete will crack over time, and they can, they can bounce out, right? If there's only a couple of bolts that are in them, or the bolts are loose, eventually they will get looser and looser and looser, and they will pop out, right? Uh, if a ra if those, those railings that kind of fit into each other and that don't do it all that well or they don't add the additional screws that they need to, to fasten it and make it mobile, same thing with those, they will eventually separate from each other or they will get bent which will add to the to problem and it will continue on and on and on. So most of the things that we do here in this gym are to find out how to make stuff stop wiggling. <laughs> make stuff stop kind of shaking between points because that's the easiest thing that we can do to make them something more sturdy. So yeah, you can glue the, fast, the, the threads of the fastener in. Uh, Loctite is something that you can put on bolts. Uh, you can put it on all sorts of different stuff. You can actually just dip screws in epoxy and screw them in, and they will become very, very strong <laughs> because epoxy is a ridiculously strong glue. And if you don't have access to bolt something, Usually that is probably going to be your strongest way to attach something. Basically. My order of operations basically in terms of knocking out things that will break down over time. Uh, if you're working with wood especially, if you're nailing things together with no other connection points, nails eventually will start to pull out, start to pull out more and more and more. You can screw them together, it'll probably hold a little bit longer, but eventually the screws will start to pull out, right? You can glue them together with screws <laughs> or with, uh, with nails. What the glue will do is it cuts off the forces that act on the fasteners themselves, uh, both the shear forces and kind of the pull-out forces. Um, and one of the best ways is to clamp it through use of like a bolt and a nut, right? If you have access to both sides of whatever it is that you're building or working on, then if you can clamp them together with enough force so that there isn't room for them to wiggle at all right off the bat, then it's probably not going to get to a point where it is going to wiggle over time. Or at that point, your materials themselves might start breaking down, right? Your, the wood that you use might start breaking down. Maybe that wasn't strong enough or something like that. The, uh, the more fasteners you have, the better each one is going to do in resisting pulling out, right? I mean, if you only have a few in there, then all the force is going to be ending up in those, and those are going to start pulling out. The more important role in fasteners in something like a box that you are building, is to actually tie the entire shape together. Generally, so anytime that you're building a box, what we recommend is that you build a frame for it first, and then you attach whatever your sheeting that you're using for it, right? Wood on the outsides, what have you. And the misconception that I had in the beginning was that I would build my frame, and I figured the frame was going to be taking all the impact. And so when I put my sheeting on, I just put a couple screws on to hold the sheeting into place. Right? I just wanted to hold this piece of wood on so that I could, I could push off it and it would be fine. But what I didn't realize, and I don't have something to, to demonstrate to you guys, but if, if you build something and you have something made out of 2x4s or 2x6s or whatever you're using to, to build your frame, and you're connecting it together, it's really not all that stable if you guys have, have used it before. You can shake it. You can twist it. Uh, the, the joints that you've created are, are generally just two fasteners together in each angle joint. And if you take two pieces of, of wood that are, that are fastened together through screws or nails or whatever, you can probably pull it apart. If you guys have dem demolished anything, you can just pull that right apart. Uh, if you take that same piece of wood and you put a piece of uh, plywood on it and you put in a bunch of screws, like a screw every like six inches or a nail or, or whatever, and you try to pull it apart, you will not be able to pull it apart for sure. If you're use even if you're using fairly thin plywood. Uh, the reason is that you have really weak shear forces when you're just using your framing members. Uh, they're only kind of good in some directions. The pulling apart direction doesn't work very well. The shear force as you're pulling things apart doesn't work very well. But if you land on that frame in just the right way, 
it'll support it because it's built to be kind of, you know, you land on this and that's going to push things down into the ground or whatever. You're going to kind of build your supports so that they take that impact straight on. But if you then go to the side and you try to twist the structure apart, you'll pull apart. So the, one of the first things that I learned is that when you're putting sheeting on something, use a ton of screws, go into every single framing member that you possibly can, and it will tie the whole structure together. If I take this box, you guys are going to see the insides of our first horrible box. You can see my, uh, our, crappy, our crappy framing job. Look how much this box shakes, right? Give me another box. <laughs> Bring that one out here. Compare that to how much these boxes shake. <laughs> Not all that much. This is a better framing job, but it's also a much, much better sheeting job. Um, when we're sheeting, when we sheet all of these things, uh, we do six inches between every fastener on the outside edges of each sheet, and on the inside structural supports, we do every eight inches. Uh, we got that from the rock climbing world. Uh, well, actually, some rock climbing gyms use less, um, but it tends to work pretty well. If you're, if you're gluing and screwing or nailing, you can get away with more. But in general, fasteners are there to be used. Uh, the fasteners are often kind of the least expensive part of a project that you're building, but they should be the highest quality because that's what's going to be like kind of holding everything together. That's what they do. They're, they're fasteners, right? If your fasteners are crappy, it's not going to stay together, right? Uh, along with that, you're going to need quality materials, right? If, if the materials themselves aren't very good, then they're going to break down as well. You can see this box uh, has gotten broken down quite a bit. It actually did a fairly good job of, of staying together. This is, uh, I think this one is made entirely of half inch sheeting, plywood sheets, except for the top, which we replaced. Um, the problem with it was that the, the, the thinner you go, the more flex your material is going to have. And the more flex it has, both the more force it's going to put on the things holding it together, and the more risk you have of blowing through it, right? Uh, which is what happened to the top. We blew through the top. I blew through the top. <laughs> Drop precision, hit the top, sides went bloop, <coughs> top cracked, right? Um, replaced it with three-quarter sheeting. Every single thing in this gym is, when it uses any kind of wood that's going to be hit, is three-quarter inches. Uh, as big as you can get in plywood before it turns into flooring, generally, right? Uh, and we use high-quality plywood. We use what's called ACX. Plywood comes in different grades. Uh, don't just go to Home Depot. Like, I, I highly recommend that you guys do a little bit of research when you're, when you're planning out your materials and go to an actual lumber store, talk to them about what they have available, what its characteristics are, because a lot of big box stores are just going to sell whatever they can get cheap, um, and that might not be what you need, right? This box here has no diagonal supports in it at all. This, uh, this gets its strength entirely through plywood. Uh, that's what, how strong this is in shear. This box has a plywood sheet on the outside face here on the edge. That is one big sheet that comes from the top back to the, uh, back, to the back, and then two more feet down on this top edge here. And that has that same sheet on the inside edge. So the inside edge that you can't see it has another plywood sheet that runs down. And this side has another one that runs down and another one that runs down. So it has three inches of plywood that is four feet long, it goes all the way back to the box, that's held in by 100 screws maybe, <laughs> right? Um, and that gives it a lot of stability. It also has balloon frames, which means the frames are as long as we could possibly make them, and it's built out of two by sixes and it weighs like 800 pounds. <laughs> but the way that we build now is that we, I mean, we used to be super budget conscious. We would build these out of as thin as we thought we could, and the, the problem with it is that I can build something that will work well for a situation that is very kind of uh, price conscious in the materials that I put into it. But the second that I turn around, what my students and coaches are going to do is they're going to go, I wonder if we can flip this on the side and then jump off of this. And I'm like, oh my god, I never even thought about that. And they're going to break the thing that I just built, right? 
This happens every single time. So every single time that we build something, people figure out a weird way to use it that we never even thought of, right? So now we just build everything as strong as we can possibly think of building it pretty much. Our design constraints are that it's, it's modular, it's kid friendly, and that it's, uh, it's something that people can move around easily so that I want the kids to be able to come in themselves and design the playground that they're gonna play on and then play on it, that's kind of my goal. Um, but as far as like padding stuff down, I don't really care because this is the sort of thing that they're gonna see outside. What I care about is the unexpected sharpness of things. If they reach into a hole and they get cut by an exposed screw or something like that, that's the sort of stuff that I wanna knock down. So that's where I care a lot. That's why all these edges are rounded over and, and kind of have been sanded out rather than having a sharp edge that someone can cut themselves on or splinter themselves on.